This documentary aims to raise awareness for episodes and historical facts that have contributed significantly to the political military turn of Portugal and Europe in the 19th century. The tragic episodes which 200 years ago led to the destruction and barbarity of war are now converted into heritage resources. They have become a landmark to remember and celebrate one of the most striking Portuguese history episodes. The Peninsula Wars. In these landscapes, where nowadays the rural world is closer to the city, the population and the combined Portuguese-British army stood against the biggest army of that time and fought the expansionist ambition of a man, Napoleon Bonaparte. A man and a name that today is synonymous of power and greatness. Nonetheless, Napoleon faced in Portugal one of the biggest drawbacks of his military career. For seven years, the Iberian Peninsula turned into a huge battlefield, drained out of resources and food production, exhausted by destruction, hunger and death. In these hills and in these villages along the two defensive lines of Torres Vedras, moments of popular and military bravery took place, allowing the survival of Portugal as an independent country. When Napoleon seized power in France, he designed a plan to weaken and destroy British naval superiority, which threatened any potential for France to establish colonies outside Europe. The continental system, or continental blockade, was the foreign policy of Napoleon I of France in his struggle against the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland during the Napoleonic Wars. It was a large-scale embargo against British trade. This policy aimed to eliminate the threat from Britain by closing French-controlled territory to its trade. In the same year, 1806, France forces Portugal to abandon its traditional alliance with the British, closing its port to their trade ships. Portugal faced a challenging dilemma. Either way, the choice would always bring problematic consequences to the nation. Stick to the British alliance, ignore Napoleon, or face its back to UK and lose sovereignty. As we all know, Portugal refused to follow Napoleon. And for this reason, in 1807, France and Spain signed the Fontainebleau Treaty, in which is decided the invasion and division of Portugal between them. On November the 20th, 1807, the first French invasion begins. Under the pretext of protecting Portugal from interference by Britain, a coalition of Napoleonic and Spanish troops invaded Portugal under the command of General Junot. This invasion forced the Portuguese royal family to move the court to Brazil. They entered in Portugal by Rodon and followed along the Tagus River. Without resistance, passed through Abrantes and arrived on November the 30th in Lisbon. With the Portuguese royal family and its court, approximately 15,000 subjects escaped from Lisbon to Brazil, an unprecedented exodus and a tremendous political success. For 13 years, Rio de Janeiro functioned as the capital of the Kingdom of Portugal. Juno settles in Lisbon with a weak army, which had lost more than half of his men due to battles, forced marches, hunger and disease which stroked them. During 1808, French troops were worn out, due to the constant pressure of the militia attacks and Portuguese popular forces. On August 1st, 1808, British troops land at Figueira de Foz and join the Portuguese army led by Bernardin Freire de Andrade. After defeating the French in the battles of Rolisa and Vimeiro, which led to the Convention of Sintra, signed on August 30th, 1808. Under this agreement, the defeated French were allowed to evacuate their troops from Portugal without further conflict. After the humiliation made by the Anglo-Portuguese army, the French troops, under the command of Salt, entered through the north, following right to Oporto, where the tragic episode, Ponte das Barcas, Barcas Bridge, disaster took place. Due to the Portuguese resistance, the French occupants were again forced to retreat. Napoleon does not give up and prepares a third invasion with a new army, commanded by the General André Massena, one of the most successful French commanders whose objective was to take Lisbon and expel the British. Nevertheless, this third military operation obliged an immense strategic plan. Portugal, with an almost impossible geography, put in danger any plans of invasion, its territory shaped and defended by large flow rivers and excavated ravines made it hard to cross. 
Messina knew of this and decided to enter Portugal by the border zone of Beira, near Almeida, which is characterized by its smooth elevations and excellent accesses. The invader, while entering Portugal, finds the village of Almeida and its impressive star-shaped fortification. The place lodged a great infantry force, several artillery pieces and prepared to resist to sieges. Almeida played an important role within the Portugal defensive strategy and the military had in it all the hopes to face the French invader. The recent military Portuguese units, created and trained by the British, are responsible by its defence and rapidly face the Napoleonic army, breaking through battles of artillery. Nevertheless, a misfortune happened to the defensive garrison. A French artillery piece made a big explosion, leading this fortress to surrender. The French went towards Guarda and passed through Viseu with no great resistance until the Luso-British armies defeated the French in the Battle of Busaco. Massena moves his armies to Coimbra, following to Santarém, from where he aims to attack Lisbon. In this attempt to reach the capital, the French came upon an entanglement of military fortifications adapted to an irregular peculiar terrain which became known as the Lines of Torres Vedras. Across the 85 kilometers from the Tagus River to the Atlantic Ocean, the Anglo-Portuguese army built a powerful defensive system with more than 100 and a half fortifications dispersed by three lines which had as main objective to stop the entrance of the French armies in Lisbon. These lines were reinforced with several complementary works, entrenchments, escarpments, palisades, abatis, batteries, artillery magazines and bridges were armed and ready to be destroyed at enemy's sight. Military roads, communication systems, landscape observatories and dams were built. By Wellington's orders, the Anglo-Portuguese army also undertook scorched earth policy measures, a powerful military strategy which involves destroying anything that might be useful to the French while withdrawing from the area. Besides the practice of burning crops to deny the enemy food sources, it also includes the destruction of infrastructure such as shelter, transportation and communications resources. All of these reinforced the mission to delay and hamper the progression of the French army, wearing it out, making it lose time, submitting the enemy to the cold of the harsh winter and to spread hunger among men. Of course, it also had serious consequences to the local population that was moving south, in an enormous excess of more than 300,000 souls, which were leaving Coimbra and going to Lisbon, behind its defensive lines. It's in this silent desert and deprived of any resource scenario that the French troops arrived to the lines in October the 11th, 1810. In the following days, between October the 12th and 14th, the most important military actions occurred. As the result of the recognitions made by the enemy forces to overcome the lines, the combats of Sobral, Dois Portes e Seramena take place. Although the 8th Corps of Jean Adon Junot was well succeeded taking the village of Sobral, where gunfire was shot from house to house, becoming possible to install Clausel's headquarters, this time the French did not succeed, nor were that lucky in the encounters that followed. Massena chose to blockade the lines. He kept his position in front of them until November the 15th, 1810, when he started to retreat under close surveillance of the mighty Alcadeon fortified set, known as probably the strongest defensive position and the one that resisted the single attempt attack made to the lines. A new chapter of the Peninsular War began. Here started the beginning of the end of Napoleonic rule over Europe. Nowadays, one can quietly walk through this major heritage and landscape set 
military architecture and archaeology were transformed into a valuable cultural strategic resource. 200 years ago, destruction, hunger, horror and death were part of this landscape. <laughs> 